God is important and God is extremely required to restrict people. But if you take the God out of the element mm. and you only use society to try and restrict the sexual desires of people and tell them they have to be monogamous, you're going to end up with more degeneracy than if men were allowed to be poly. Okay, my, here's my theory. Yeah. When I was out about and I was having fun as a Christian man, I was waiting for the right woman. Yeah. And I came to this guy and he goes, I don't understand. I thought you were Christian. And I go, listen, bro, I'll be a good Christian man to a good Christian woman. When I find somebody who has good morals and I know that she'll have my back and she'll do good. And when God presents me that girl, I will be a good man to her. Yeah. And he asked me something that changed my life forever. He goes, well, if you're the son of God and you're asking for his daughter, why would that father ever give you a daughter when you treat everybody else like garbage? Regardless of whether you're an atheist or not, you're thinking of God as a man in the sky, but you need to think of God as a concept as a whole. And once you do that, it's impossible to accept that he doesn't exist, right? I said to the atheist, I said, let's say there was two islands. They're shipwrecked, right? And there's two islands. Both of them are full of savages. On one, one island, you and your friend are shipwrecked. On one island, your friend goes and he crashes and they, they kill him and they eat him. And you go to another island and they want to kill you and eat you, but they don't because it's against their religion. Mm -hmm. Did God save your life? Who cares? Who doesn't even know the name of their God? But their God said, don't kill shipwrecked survivors. And now you're alive. So their God saved your life. The concept of God in and of itself saved your life. You owe God just for the concept of the idea. So even the idea of opposing evil as a whole is a belief in God. So you're either an evil person or you believe in God in some regard. Talk about the Western world being fallen. What even is the culture of the Western world anymore? We have gang signs and we have frozen food and we have the pride flag. What else? Like what even is there anymore that unifies us in any regard? I mean, I think... I, I'm pretty sure, and I've never tested this, I don't want to find out, I'm under enough matrix attacks, but if you were to burn an American flag and burn a pride flag, you'd do more time for burning the pride flag. It's a hate crime. So it's you have to actually then understand is, okay, if this is destroying society, is it being done on purpose? And what is the end goal of it? And who's doing it behind, who's doing it in the first place? And that, that, then it gets really scary. You can only, you can lead a horse to war or you cannot force it to drink. And I feel like the reason why I'm now one of the most liked people there on the internet, even the things I sell, are beneficial. I have a school that teaches people how to make money online. It's beneficial. If you follow me, you can make money online. You'll start to train and go to the gym. You'll listen to some positive motivational things. You'll feel more motivated. I'll try and guide you towards God. Either one. I'm not even strictly Islam. I believe that if you are a religious person, you're a better person. I was raised Christian. I live in a Christian nation. Romania is actually I think the second or third most Christian country on earth. It's a very Christian country here. There's churches everywhere. They, they strongly believe. And that's where I began my journey. But I always had a very healthy respect for Islam because I understand that to a degree, to have a religion at all, you have to have an intolerance to a degree. Because without an intolerance, you don't have rules. You don't have laws. You don't have any, like you said, you have to earn God's respect. If you're a religion which is tolerant of everything, then you don't have to earn God's respect. You can be a bad person and do bad things. God loves me, so it's fine. Well, no, it's not, because that's not the point of the religion. As the world becomes a bigger mess, as people struggle to survive to pay their bills, as people become more and more unhappy, as the wars start, all this craziness, people sit there and go, do I want to be entertained by clowns? Do I want to watch these streamers who are clowns? Do I want to be entertained or do I want a solution? Do I want some form of stability? Well, it says in the Quran, just because you believe you think Allah will not test you. Just because you believe in me, you think you're not going to be tested. I think and being tested is a great thing for That's you. how God shows love. Yeah. Because God, God. Yeah, because God's love is a disciplinarian love. It's a masculine love. It's like a father. Let me change the way I, I worded that. How do you judge the success of religion? You know, you say conspiracy theorist. Nowadays, that just means you're ahead of the curve, unfortunately. And Alex was talking about, and a lot of other people talking about, and there's a lot of text which talks about the fact that the people who are in charge of the world, they believe that... As AI improves, a huge percentage of the planet are going to become useless ears. They don't need you anymore. Well, well that's the thing. So let's, let's give a thought experiment. As it stands right now, most people are so uninteresting and so unremarkable that you could replace them online with a chat GPT bot and you wouldn't really notice. Genuinely, that's how boring most humans are. If you're special and remarkable and unique and you're famous or you do whatever, that's different. But most people you could replace with chat GPT by text, you wouldn't even notice. And that is a free application which is brand new. Imagine we're going to be in 20 years from now. So we start talking about useless eaters. This has been discussed 
by very important, very powerful people at length. The same people who are trying to give you the vaccine are talking about the fact that the population of the earth needs to decline. Why do they, why do we need, they say it, Bill Gates says it. Why do we need to get rid of people? Well, machines will do it. So why do we need people sitting around who have hopes, dreams, aspirations? They want health care. They want safety, security, children, all of this garbage. We just need somebody to do X job and a machine can do X job. So what do we need these people for? Anyone can say they're something. You can walk into a strip club and everyone says you're a Christian. It doesn't mean anything, right? So how do you judge the success of a religion? Well, I like to think the best way to judge the success of a religion is how successful is it at fighting evil? How successful is it at preserving the morality of a population in X parameter. So when you look at it from that way, you can't say that Islam isn't the most successful religion on earth. It's the most successful in regards to opposing evil. It's the most successful in regards to opposing its differing viewpoints. It's the most successful in regards to having people act within the, the limits and the confines of what it finds to be moral and good to God. It's the most adhered to. It's the most feared. It's the most respected in most forms. And then also I'd like to think- I, I would say it's the most feared. Yeah, it's the most feared. But what is respect without fear? And feeling like if God has given me a platform which people listen to me, I should at least tell the truth of what's going to happen. Okay. When I'm sitting there and saying to men, look, life as a man is shit. It's always been shit. It's never been good. When men wake up and say I'm depressed and life is hard and I'm sad and I'm struggling right now, I say, okay, throughout history, men have always struggled. Happiness is for children and women. Name a time in history it was better to be a man. Was it better to be a man in World War II? Was it better to be a man on the Titanic? Was it better to be a man in the Napoleonic Wars? Was it better to be a man when you were sitting in Vienna and the Mongol horde arrived, ready to decapitate any male and enslave all the females? When's it ever been good to be a man? Building the pyramids, was that fun? It's always sucked. My money makes me happy because every single person I love lives a fantastic life. If I have to suffer so 50 people can live content, I believe that a man should do that. I know I've only reached 10% of what I can actually do. It bothers me. And no matter how much money I'm making or how most Googled man alive, whatever, whatever, I can still identify the inefficiencies in my systems. I can still identify where more money could have been made. And money isn't that important, but like we said, Money is a very simple way to measure success because it's numbers. Numbers are easy. Yeah. This number, that number. It's easy. What does a company do when it wants to measure the success of a company? It looks at the numbers. What does the YouTube channel do? It looks at the numbers. Numbers are easy. So if you're going to say, how do I be successful in life? Money is not everything, but it's a nice, easy way to measure because it's numbers. And then when you understand it's the time and energy of other people, you sit and go, okay, well, I have this large empire now and I have all these people who work for me and all these people I love and all these people I care about and all these children and all this going on and the world is getting more and more messed up and everything's on a decline and everything's being destroyed and a certain number of people are going to become useless eaters and are going to be eradicated and they're going to try and lock us all in our 15-minute cities for the climate or some garbage. That's coming in no time. How do I combat and fight all of this and protect all the people I care about? Well, I need the time and energy of others. I need an army, so I need money. That's right. So Who's what do you own? You own the body you're in, perhaps, but then they force you to get a vaccine, so maybe you don't own that anymore. You own your soul. You can own your thoughts, but then that belongs to God. So then what do you even own now on this planet? Because I have people say to me all the time, oh, I'd love to buy a house. And I own my house. You don't own that house. You have to pay property taxes every month. And if you don't pay them, they'll take it off you. You're renting it from the government. To piss the government off and you'll see how long you own your house. Because I tell you what's going to happen. They're going to turn up with a piece of paper and say it's ours. Done. Happened to me. So you never even own anything on this earth. No matter how much money you have, right? Which also puts money in perspective. All it is is the time and energy of other people. It's all it's good for. You can buy a Bugatti, but you don't own that Bugatti. You can drive it a bit if they let you. And piss the matrix off enough, they'll take that off you too. That's perhaps why I'm gearing up for war so heavily, because I believe that this war can't be avoided. And a lot of people ask me, why with my money do I not do one of two things? Which is one, vanish. Because I could just delete everything and shut up, right? I could just go away. But that's not you. That's not me. And, and I think that God would be disappointed in me. So I think God's given me this platform to tell the truth, so I'm going to do it. Well, the second thing is I could sell out to the system. I could cut. also not you. It's not me. I could sell to the system, say what they want me to say, promote the things they want me to promote, sell shit to kids, be a piece of shit, but then, and then they'll let me live. But then you just remove the only thing that you do own, and it's your soul. Absolutely. And, and, and you don't want them to take that away. No, no, exactly. I need to keep something. Yeah. So it ain't worth giving that up for a bit more money, because I have unlimited money anyway. Do, do we respect men we don't fear? But there's a man who could do absolutely nothing to you on any level at all. You might be nice to him, sure, because we're not bad people. But would you really respect him? If you could take his chick in front of his face, set his car on fire, and you wouldn't do a thing. You wouldn't respect him. You might be nice to him because we're not bullies. But you wouldn't respect him. 
Respect and fear are linked. They're not always the same thing, and you can, you can maybe have fear without respect, but it's very hard to have respect without fear. But also, I, I, I heard someone say once that we see the world as we see ourselves. If you're a thief, you think everyone's a thief. If you're a liar, you think everyone's a liar. And I, I kind of agree with that. I understood that. I also like to think we see religion as we see ourselves. I like to see myself as a person whose respect you have to earn. I like to see myself as a person who has strong, rigid boundaries. I like to see myself as a person who will stand up and say, no, that's wrong. I like to see myself as a person who's not afraid of being shamed by whatever community for saying, I don't agree with that particular ideal. If you don't look in the mirror and be like, yeah, I did the right thing, then what do you even have? When I see these Satanists, and they're, especially in America, and they're doing, let's keep it on Christianity, these Satanists, and they're dressing up Jesus as gay and all this stuff like that, that's not done in any kind of good faith. There's no good reason to do that. That's done with genuinely malicious mm -hmm. intention. And what kind of people want to do that? And then the answer by extension is, I thought America was a Christian country, so how can you have a Christian country where the, the prophets of the religion are mocked to the highest possible levels within the confines of the country and, and it's promoted? Is that a Christian country? Doesn't seem like a Christian country to me. I don't think the same thing would happen with Islam in Saudi Arabia. I can't imagine that happening. So how can you say we're a Christian country, but everyone's mocking our God on the streets? Ha ha ha. It's, it's on Netflix. Ha ha ha. That's not a Christian country to me. So if you're not a Christian country, then where's the religion? Where, the religion's supposed to enforce certain boundaries. You're supposed to at least show it respect. Mm -hmm. you know? In Christian countries, there's more respect for Islam than there is for Christianity. In a Christian country, name one. They still don't do it with the Islamic prophet. Why do you think that is? It's too much smoke. It's just not worth the heat. <laughs> because, because people believe. And I'm not advocating for violence on any level. I'm saying that even these degenerates who are trying to destroy people's belief in God, like we've discussed earlier, because they don't want you to have any baseline morality. If you believe in God, there are commandments yes and no. That baseline morality prevents you being an absolute slave. So they're trying to destroy it. But even those degenerates who are trying to mock and disgrace God understand there's a point where it just backfires and, ooh, this is smoke. Every single part of me is on my team. My mind, my hands, my feet, everything, my teeth, you name it. If it goes to war, I've got every single weapon at my disposal. So when people say to me, why am I fighting this war? I say, you're in the war too. You're just going to be a casualty of it. You're going to be a forgotten name. Not even a name. You're going to be a number. In wars, it's interesting, in wars, if you look at any war, they'll talk about 12,000 people died here. And one of them was this guy. There's names and there's numbers. So if you're going to go to war, you can decide you want to be a name or a number. People are going to die regardless. And this is why I teach the things I teach. I say to men, listen, you need to become as strong as possible. You need to make a bunch of money. You need to prepare. You need to have seven passports in seven different countries. And you just start sitting there getting paranoid and panicking and getting things done. This is why I push masculine excellence. Because when they come for you, when they come for us all, if you have no weapons to defend yourself, you're going to be one of the 12,000 in the ditch. Which is goes back to earlier when you were saying, well, they're going to get you. How do you sleep at night? Because I can't not do this. Because by doing this, my father is remembered. And I will be remembered. And my son will be born and instilled with a sense of duty, which will make him impossible to program by the Matrix. So I know my son will be a good person. He won't be a piece of shit like all these other children. He will be born with morality. And he will understand that his father sacrificed himself for the good of the world. So yes, I'm, I don't like being alone in a dark car park, of course. But also, what's the alternative? To say, Dad, sorry, they offered me some money. Is that the alternative? I don't know. But, but maybe some people can sign up to that, but I certainly. There's only two ways to learn lessons, hard and harder. If you're, if you're smart, you take it the hard way. Real idiots take it the hardest way. Yeah. But there's no easy way to learn lessons. So you're right. I agree with everything you say. And that's, and that's how God teaches anyway. That's how God is always going to teach because God is a disciplinary in love. I think it says, someone said this to me, I think in school you learn things and then you're given a test. But with God, you're given the test and then you learn things. And that's the way it works. But it's all about reflection and self-reflection and looking back. And that's what we were saying earlier. But Because most people do not self-reflect on their actions ever. Reap what you sow. And they don't understand why they end up where they end up. And they think it's someone else's fault. I think everybody on the planet has something to prove. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline, as we, dis as we just discussed. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think, and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and them to build something amazing. 
It's the best thing about being a man. You get to build who you are. And I became religious because I realized there's so much evil in the world. God must exist. You can't equal an opposite force. Light That's has science. darkness. Light darkness has, has darkness. Yeah. And I see so much pure evil. The devil must be real, which means God must be real. We got to remember that life is held in God's hands, yep. not the devil's hands. Yep. So this whole entire demons or these matrix, as much as as powerful as we all think they are, yep. they only move when God wants them to move. Uh, I agree. The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God. I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, I've done that because I've been trying to prove myself to my lineage my entire life. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wake up at the more. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion, fighting the matrix out here by myself, more. I will have to be braver, I must try harder.